Okay, so just a bit of a workshop update, mainly because you know when things are a bit weird and you think, oh, that's a bit crazy, and then it just gets a whole level more crazy. Well, that's kind of happened, but uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. So, yeah, this one's just having a bit of a 12-volt battery maintenance. When Zoe's um, sort of charged the 12-volt battery, the DC-DC voltage is not very high, basically, so that's just having a boost on my 20-amp um, charger. Um, next update. So, in a video a little while ago, I featured this little Miev. So, I did a series on this. Um, I bought it with a battery fault. I fixed loads of these. They're not very common, but they're great fun. I really like them. The first um, EV I ever fixed was a Miev. And I bought that one mainly because um, I kind of like the look of it. It was 14 years old, so it's just kind of proving that EVs are pretty fixable, really. It was really low mileage. The battery, unfortunately, wasn't in great health. They tend to be quite robust, the batteries in those. They're not very energy dense, but they're a UASA cell, lithium cell, but um, they tend to last quite well. But that one, I think, could sat probably flat or fall for a long time. So on that car, I didn't know whether to scrap it or whether somebody would want it. The range wasn't amazing, about 40 miles. You're sort of thinking, well, that's a bit limiting. So I put it out for sale locally, just sort of Facebook and stuff like that. No, not a lot happened, a few inquiries. People were intrigued because it was kind of cheap. I put it up for 1,500 quid. So it's basically like, you know, pretty much the cheapest EV in the UK. A few inquiries from further afield, but nothing sort of came of that. Um, and a local guy basically contacted me and said, can I come and have a look? I said, yeah, sure, you know, I told him all about it. I sort of wasn't um, shy about the details. Ah, police helicopter. Um, they come to get me. So, yeah, I just told him all about it, took it for a drive. He was sort of in the trade, but not that familiar with EVs. But I just told him exactly all about it. Um, and uh, basically, yeah, he turned up. He made me an offer. We negotiated a bit, and he bought it for 10% under the asking price. So he had money in his pocket, so I shook his hand. And um, yeah, he took it away. So that car, you know, even though people are like, oh, it's no good, you shouldn't have bought it. The guy said, and my daughter's about to pass the test. She just wants something simple, easy to drive. And he's got a really tight turning circle, really small car. You know, it's just dead easy to drive. And just for running around town, it's just a cheap car for them to use around town. She's not gonna go that far. And at the end of the day, it's not that much money to spend. So that car is on the road, working, being used. So that's that update. So that's kind of cool. So on to the craziness. So I've just started doing some prep on this car. This needs uh, motor bearings doing. This is a standard um, job that I tend to do. It's the 5AQ Zoe motor. It's a 19 plate. Um, it's got the motor cooling fan there. because It's an air-cooled motor on this type. So yeah, just doing a bit of prep. Now this car, sort of bearing in mind I don't really advertise, I do sort of diagnostic work with garages, I do a few projects, um, people kind of offer me cars and things, and people have started contacting me trying to get me to do their bearings, which is fine. Now the guy who owns this car lives in Falkirk, okay, in Scotland. I'm based in Essex. Falkirk is over 400 miles away. And this car arrived the other day on the back of a truck, which is insane. Um, but there's basically a truck guy that I know who specialises in those long runs up and down the country. So the first, you know, I was talking about the first car I ever fixed was a Miev. Well, it actually came from Scotland. Um, and this guy called Alex picked it up, runs a transport company. And he's got a truck and a trailer so he can move two cars at once. And he does those long runs up and down the country. Does a lot of Copart auction stuff like that, picking cars up and taking them around the place. And so when the guy from Falkirk contacted me, I was like, well, it seems a bit mad, but you know, if you want to send it here, that's absolutely fine. And I'll work on it. And I sort of told him how much it would cost and all that kind of stuff. And I said, I'll oh, contact Alex because he, he's, you know, does those kind of runs and he's been to my house a few times before. And yeah, he arranged it. So the guy was happy with the price, <laughs> the customer. Um, it's sort of an estimate, you know, obviously other things can be required. And I have to show you the mileage on this car. This is where it gets even more insane. So yeah, when you drive this car, it sounds like a bag of spanners. Um, I think it's been sat for a while. The discs are a little bit rusty, but you can really hear that hollow rumble from the motor. And it's come 400 miles for me to fix it, which is totally mad. Um, I said to the customer, so why do you want me to do it? I'm 400 miles away. And he said, well, I don't trust my local Renault garage. And anyway, they would charge about six and a half grand, which is a rather a lot more than I charge. Because uh, Renault would put in a new motor, which is about three and a half thousand. And then all the labor and fluids and everything on top. 
Renault obviously charged a lot for labour and all that kind of stuff. And um, he said in terms of sort of independent garages, there's just not many around up there apparently. Um, he's spoken to a couple, they don't really know what they're talking about. He's not willing to just put it into somewhere that are not going to know what to do with it and um, just charge him diagnostics and come back with don't really know what to do, you know, could put in a motor, not really sure. He didn't want to be in that position, you know, in sort of three weeks' time, basically. He'd rather the cars be fixed back and working in three weeks' time. So, um, you know, obviously including transport time and test driving and all that. So here it is. Here it is, totally mad. I've never had a car come this distance for me to fix. But absolutely crazy. But yeah, I'm just doing a bit of prep outside. Obviously, that's going to get undercover. This car, I'm going to show you the mileage. And this is the crazy, really crazy thing. Hopefully, it will show it because I've got the charging socket off. If I just wait for it to warm up a second. And there we are. 54,000 miles. And it sounds like a bag of spanners. That... I just can't believe this is the lowest mileage one I've done. I've heard about cars needing this. And I mean, I think when it's like 100,000, I'm kind of like, well, you know, the car's done a lot of miles, probably saved the owner a lot of money. I'm like, well, 100,000, it needs quite a big rebuild. Seems reasonable. Then it should be good pretty much for another 100,000 when I put bearings in the motor. That's the idea. Um, sometimes the reduction gear is noisy. You can put a low mileage reduction gear on it and they should just keep going. There's no reason why, you know, with the bearings replaced, the motor will come on, just keep going and going. But 54,000 miles. And the guy couldn't find anyone and it's come 400 miles. That is mad. But interestingly, let's have a look at this. So, yeah, this is an R110. I did a video previously on what cars seem to suffer. Well, and I thought the R90 did better and the R110 worse because the R110 is, um, uh, more powerful and seems to suffer a bit more that seems to agree with that i have to say i got very excited when i looked in the back split rear folding seat so this is a late r110 yeah pretty worrying um yeah interesting i did just do a little video which um will go out shortly on the actual motor bearings i'll just grab one so i smashed apart a bearing an actual bearing. So this was out of the last one I did, an R110. There we go, if we can get it to focus. And let's have a find a... There's some quite considerable... Oh, yeah, there was some... Look at the wear on. So these are the actual bearings for the motor. And you can see where these are pitted. Yeah, so I've got another video on doing a bit more sort of analysis and thinking about what's causing that. But yeah, hopefully you can see that. That's the actual bearings. There you go. Fun and games. So chances are exactly this has happened in this car. Yeah, it's a 2019, as you probably just saw by the number plate. It's come 400 miles. It's done 54,000, which is diabolical, to be honest. And this is like one of the newer ones. All the cars I'm fixing at the moment are 18, 19 plates. They're not the 16, 17s. You know, this blue one, I rebuilt this. But that's on 116,000 miles, nearly 117 now. And it's driving absolutely fine. Um, I was waiting to get a sensor replaced. That's the only reason I've still got it and haven't sold it. But yeah, 116,000. Needs a motor bearings. Fine, you know. But this is... That's done half. That is terrible, isn't it? Well, it's less than half, isn't it? Absolutely diabolical. So, there you go. A little update. A couple of interesting things. Yeah, I really don't aim to fix cars from 400 miles away because that is just ridiculous, I think. But hopefully in future, more garages will be able to do it. Um, but at the moment, yeah, it feels like it's just me in the country. No, I know it's, I talk to a lot of garages that fix a lot of Zoe, so I know a lot of repairs take place. It's just a bit mad when, yeah, you sort of talk to someone. Yeah, you, if you can get it here, yeah, I'll fix it. And then here it is. So there we go. I'll keep stripping that down later, get it undercover, and then we'll get the bearings replaced. All right, hope that's interesting, and I will catch you later. Cheers.